uh, welcome to the Bodybuilding.com podcast, everyone. Um, this week, we're nearly hair-free. Yeah, wow. <laughs> uh, I'm Nick Colius. I'm an editor for Bodybuilding.com, as is our co-host, Heather Eastman. And over there across the table, we have none other than Dr. Jim Stepani. He's the owner of Jim Supplement Science, a researcher, author, the man behind Shortcut to Size, Shortcut to Shred, Shortcut to Strength. And you've been an author a whole bunch of different places, written many, many articles yep. for bodybuilding.com as well. G- great to have you here. Oh, great to be here. My pleasure. Um, now, more recently, Jim has been doing something pretty unique for the site, even though these aren't necessarily the, the same sort of workouts that are that people who follow our site are always accustomed to doing. Right. They're full-body workouts. Correct. Right? And, um, yep. Something I hear you talking about a lot these days, and I wanted to chat with you about that and kind of put it in context of where this fits in the progression of, of you as a, as a lifter and a researcher. Yeah, it's, a, it's you know, an interesting uh, progression. You know, I've been training since I was seven years old, maybe even younger. So <laughs> I've literally been training all my life. My father uh, built quite an impressive home gym. Mm. You know, and you I, just would wander yeah, in there as a kid? You know, I wanted to hang out with my dad. So, right. You know, and it's, he had the Muscle and Fitness magazines. Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. back then it was Muscle Builder, not even Muscle and Fitness. Mm-hmm. And I would read the magazines mm-hmm. and learn about what exercises hit different muscle groups. Mm-hmm. And then I started learning about muscle fibers, mm. and I thought, wow, there's a whole science about how to make muscles bigger and stronger. So, so, at, I, so at age seven, you were already doing back and biceps, chest and tries? Already, <laughs> he was already a little nerd literally. back then. So, yeah, was, so yeah, what, what, what were the first sorts of plans that you followed when you said, all right, that's it, I'm going to go and I'm going to lift some weights? And so I followed, you know, like the Joe Weider, the Arnold okay. Schwarzenegger mm-hmm. workouts, uh-huh. and, you know, I would follow the diets and muscle, and I would cook, make my own meals, you know. Hmm. Instead of my mom's meals, because I wanted to get a certain amount of protein and a certain type of carbs. So, mm-hmm. uh, so I've been doing that for quite a while. And, you know, the nice thing is, is not only have I been doing it in the gym, but I've also been studying it in the lab mm-hmm. consecutively at the same time. Right. And so what it's allowed me to do is, you know, prior uh, to sort of uh, being known as, you know, the guy behind Shortcut Series and Encyclopedia Muscle and Strength book and the science editor. I was researching what was happening in the lab and mm-hmm. trying to connect what's going on at the level of the gene mm-hmm. and how to apply that to results in the gym. And so I studied with uh, people like Dr. Bill Kramer, mm-hmm. uh, who's well-known for hormone uh, production, testosterone, Mm -hmm. growth hormone following uh, exercise. And so, you know, we used to study what we call endocrine function, meaning hormone is released like testosterone from the testicles Mm -hmm. or growth hormone from the pituitary gland, travels to the muscle, and the anabolic hormone instigates muscle growth. Well, we soon realized that we don't have to rely on things from the blood. The muscle itself mm-hmm. is making changes that mm-hmm. are changing muscle size, muscle strength. Mm-hmm. So there's local factors going on. And so that's when I started realizing that, you know, it's not about these sort of systemic changes, but there's more local things going on in the muscle fiber. Mm-hmm. And so I got in, interested in gene regulation. And so I ended up doing a postdoc after University of Connecticut at Yale School of Medicine where I was studying gene regulation and metabolism and exercise and what happens when you fast to mm-hmm. metabolic genes. Speaking of fasting, I was actually studying fasting in 2000 and how mm-hmm. that, uh, we can talk more about that yeah, uh, in a minute. But so what always stuck with me was the activity of genes and how critical that was for all the changes that occur because that's what makes the proteins. Mm-hmm. That our body, you know, when you think of protein, we think of protein being the building blocks of muscle. Well, proteins actually are functional. Mm-hmm. There's functional proteins in the body, like hemoglobin, which carries oxygen right. to mm-hmm. the blood. It's a functional uh, protein. Uh, insulin is a protein. It's a functional protein. It's not a building block for muscle. It's right. literally a molecule that has a function in the body. That's a protein. So we need proteins, and those proteins are regulated by the genes. And so it started occurring to me that the way to really get results, whether it's fat loss, muscle growth, or strength, is to keep activating those genes because they're driving all the messaging. And so I started looking into, you know, more frequent training. Mm. 
and started realizing, you know, going from, like, you know, most people look at once a week training, like shortcut the size. Right. I mm-hmm. even train once a week, right? Mm-hmm. You hit chest one day, right. and then you don't hit it again until the next week. That's a recovery uh, base training where you go in there, you annihilate a muscle annihilate and then you it. give it for, you know, seven days. Well, here we're not going in and annihilating muscle. All we're doing is going in and instigating gene activity, but every day right. we're turning it on. So instead of going in once a week and turning on those genes and then you get gene activity rises, then it falls, mm-hmm. then you wait seven days, then it rises. You're hitting it again while gene activity is already up before it's dropped back down. And so what I'm trying to create is like a staircase effect where instead of letting it drop, if we hit it again, Mm -hmm. can that activity be enhanced even further than the initial response because Mm -hmm. you're hitting it again before it's down? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't really know that, but based on some of the results I'm seeing, you know, I'm, I'm... Theory is great, you know, being a real uh, bench lab scientist, I understand theory is good, but theory doesn't mean much. You know, you can debate whether you do cardio before or after, or Mm -hmm. cardio on a separate day, right? Shortcut to shred, what do I show you? Do cardio right in the middle of your workout. Right next to the bench. Mm -hmm. Right Right there, right in the middle. Before, after, no. How about during? Right. You know, think, people. All this theory doesn't mean anything if it doesn't produce results. Mm -hmm. Mm And so how can you tell me that you shouldn't be doing cardio around weight workouts when I can show you how many thousands of people who have lost weight, broken their PRs, Mm -hmm. and gained muscle while they were doing cardio during their workout? Mm -hmm. That's nice. You have a theory about when you should do cardio, Mr. Expert. (laughs) But here's thousands and thousands of people seeing real results. So... If you think doing cardio during the workout is stupid, how can you explain the results, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The results are really all that matters. And so what I started finding was that doing more frequent training, daily training, is really the key to Mm -hmm. keeping the activity of metabolic genes up so that you burn body fat. For example, I just did a photo shoot where I'm about Mm -hmm. 4% body fat. I had four surgeries done through February and March on my knee, Mm -hmm. one knee. I haven't done any cardio since January. All I do is full body training with zero cardio. And I'm 4% body fat. Mm -hmm. Because I'm keeping my genes activated all day, I'm burning fat and carbs like a machine. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean that was that was one question I had is yeah you can talk about thousands of people having these results but we're talking about you too an, adva- yeah. an advanced it's, lifter right right because one of the great knocks that you hear against full body training is that's phase one stuff you know it really is you know what's re- what's really interesting is that you know we typically recommend it for beginners and right. the reason we do that is because the beginners. Uh, adaptation to weight training, the first few months is mainly neurological. Mm -hmm. It's all, Mm -hmm. you know, learning how to fire nerves. That's how they get stronger. You really don't start Mm -hmm. building muscle until, you know, a a month or two, you know. Mm -hmm. It's really about neurological changes. So frequency matters, right? Mm -hmm. You want to do the bench press three times a week, not once a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you do the bench press three times a week? Well, the whole body training would be the easiest way done three times a week. Repetition. Mm -hmm. Do it again. Do it another day. Learn that movement, right? Then we start figuring, well, now you need more volume. As you get more experience, you need more volume to create muscle damage and instigate those those changes. However, the research from New Zealand that looked at full body training versus a typical split, Mm -hmm. they found that the subjects who were uh, doing the whole body training, when they split them up into like a stronger group, meaning more like advanced trainers, people who had more lifting experience, in a weaker group, the stronger group with the most experience had the best gains in strength Hmm. from whole body training versus the experienced lifters on a split, meaning whole body training might actually also be more beneficial for advanced trainers. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, so this is the first time I've gotten to really talk to you. Mm-hmm. I've, I've, you know, worked at bodybuilding.com for years. And when I first came in, 
What really struck me about your trainer is that you were, you know, you're Dr. Jim Stepani. You've got a PhD and you really approach it from a science perspective. But then what's so interesting is I thought you would be super, super like this is how you eat and this is how you do it and this is how you this. And it's almost like you're looking for, I don't want to say, well, I, I do want to say shortcut because that, that's yeah, what your right, program is. But, but you're looking for kind of the, the best and fastest way to do make things. It easy, right? And Get the best results. It's almost like, yeah, you're trying to make it and easy. And make it realistic. It yeah. doesn't have to be, you know, I'm not a food Nazi. I love to eat. <laughs> I love to drink. Mm -hmm. You know, I like to enjoy myself. What's the point of being healthy and active if sure. you can't enjoy food, you can't enjoy yourself and, mm -hmm. and your, have your, a good your time. latest workouts reflect that too. They're almost like you recommend categories. It's not like, no, you have to do this movement. It says, yeah. Pick from the list. Yeah, exactly. Do what you can. There's yeah. no excuses. You know, that's the thing. Everybody, you know, what I try to show people is it's really not that hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's really not that hard to be more active and eat mm -hmm. smarter. You know, it really isn't. And so what I try to do is take the science, but then don't complicate it and talk about PPAR and activity of, you know, this gene and talking over everybody's heads and the science. But... Mm -hmm. How do we then take that information and make it make sense to a 16-year-old kid mm -hmm. right. who can then go and say, oh, that means, or someone who dropped out of high school and is 35 and, you know, doesn't, you know, have the highest IQ. Can they understand how to follow my program and can they learn from it? I don't want to just give them a fish. I want to teach them how to fish, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the whole point. Well, here, yeah, you can follow this as I tell you to and get awesome results. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to why I have you doing this, you can then take that and create your own right. workout when you go to the gym and there isn't a leg press. Or there you'll be able to go, hey, I'll just do this. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's sort of the message, you know, I try to teach people. You don't have to food prep. You can go to any restaurant you want. In order, trust me, you can go to McDonald's and find something to eat mm -hmm. that will be on any diet, whether it's paleo, you know, you're intermittent fasting, a low, any diet, you can go to almost any restaurant this day and age and make a food choice that will allow you to stay within that range. It's, mm -hmm. you know, it's just making smart choices. And so my goal is to, you know, just simplify it for mm -hmm. people, make it easy. I mean, and, and really, the, that's what the, the, gym line is the pre-workout was i was telling people buy creatine put this much in buy beta alanine put this much in right buy branch <laughs> chains put this much in i remember we had and one it, jim stepani tells you how to make your own pre-workout yeah, that it was tastes a like huge crap. article <laughs> right yeah exactly right <laughs> here mm -hmm. now you can have it all you don't have to buy them all you know it mm -hmm. simplifies and, mm -hmm. and and makes it easier and that's really the the goal because it's my goal you know, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, nothing makes me happier than going into a Starbucks and seeing them sell salami and cheese in a prepackaged, you know, like, right? my God, they're finally getting, people are finally <laughs> getting the protein. Or the eggs. You know, or the <laughs> eggs. Yeah, you can go and buy hard-boiled eggs. Right. Oh, my God, at a 7-Eleven? What do you mean? I, I can, don't have to stick to the Slim Jim? You know what I mean? I can actually get an egg or a yogurt or a string cheese? You know, that's, that I love, I love that, that sort of convenience factor that, you know, it used to be convenience for the average Joe. Now, you know, we're getting more convenience for people who mm -hmm. want to right. live better and be healthier. Mm -hmm. Sure, yeah, and, and it seems like, the, the, to bring it back to full body training, there and is that, a convenience e element to You know, that. it's, con yeah. you know, and that's the thing, you know, it, you know, there's research that shows it enhances fat loss. I'm living proof. Like mm -hmm. I said, I, mm -hmm. I, I had to stop doing cardio. No cardio. And, and I'm leaner than I've ever been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the best shape during, I mean, except for my right leg. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but, you know, and, and the fact that I can't do certain things yet, but I'm literally in the, you know, my best physical shape mm -hmm. right now to, during a recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just because I stuck with the whole body training. Right. Yeah, you know, that was going to be allows... one of my questions was what, what, what cardio works best if somebody think they can't get out of that cardio mindset? Yeah, well, you can, you can still use my cardio acceleration. Mm -hmm. You can do that in between sets. You can do Tabatas mm -hmm. after or in between exercises. You know, again, 
Think outside the box. Sure. Add it when you want. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really not that hard. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, looking at some of the workouts you've been putting up recently, they look like they would have serious cardiovascular demands inside well, that's the, the workout. Thing. When you're doing, you know, I don't really rest. Right. So yeah, so he's staying you know, aerobic the entire time. It's an intense mm-hmm. workout. Or like four minute muscle that. Hit, yeah, you're like, going for four wild. minutes yeah. straight. Mm-hmm. Every you know, every energy four, system gets taxed. Yeah, you're right. going four minutes. Mm-hmm. I need so at the end of that workout, it's you know it's pretty cardio based. I haven't tried but it's it not yet. Like, but that looks you know, brutal. It's not like what you think of. It's like cardio acceleration, right. where you're like, you know, do swings, do step ups, run in place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's really, it doesn't have to be cardio to have cardio benefits. Mm-hmm. You know what we would typically think sure. of cardio. You know, mm-hmm. I mean the best cardiovascular benefits are from high intensity interval training, not from long distance right. running. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And so, weight training can be high intensity. Exactly. That's what it is. Right? Essentially, exactly. what do you do? High yeah. intensity exercise followed by rest. Right. High yeah. intensity exercise followed by rest. Mm-hmm. That's high intensity interval training. Right. It's movement. That's what mm-hmm. weight training is. I feel like I'm getting a cardio workout right you know, now. <laughs> like, you know, like weight training is essentially, and I, I love that meme, you know, they have the, it's like the old school oh, uh, boxer yeah, the, guy, and he goes, right. what do you mean cardio? Yeah, it's like cardio. You mean lift weights faster? Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, seriously, <laughs> yeah. the, it's, I know it's a funny meme, but that's really true. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, you can use weights as your mm-hmm. as your cardio. Sure. You know, kettlebell swings are mm-hmm. a perfect example. Mm-hmm. I'm glad to always bring it back to the kettlebell if we can. <gasps> yes, <laughs> Nick and his kettlebells. Um, so, can we delve into intermittent fasting? We had a really uh, sure. We touched sure. on it, and, mm-hmm. and um, I'll Jim. I'll let you go ahead and kind of just. Tell us well, yeah. how, what you're how, doing how did you and how you got come into around it. to this. Now, really quick, he was studying it back in 2000. Right. Yeah. Right. And you only so we were just started at, doing it. Yeah, but I've only really started doing it myself mm-hmm. um, because my main concern was was muscle mass with mm-hmm. the fasting. You know. Yeah, and that's something I wanted to address because mm-hmm. I feel like that's why most gym people won't go and try yeah, I mean, for example, fasting because they're scared. Of I don't it. think I know one professional bodybuilder who. Mm-hmm. uses intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. And when you consider these guys have to maintain, regardless of what they're using to maintain that muscle mass, mm-hmm. to maintain that muscle mass, their eating pattern, mm-hmm. they, they, there's no way they could maintain right. it. It's force feeding more than yeah. it's intermittent fasting. With intermittent fasting. Yeah. fasting you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? So when you look at it from that standpoint, anybody who's interested in muscle is like, yeah, I don't want to go right. any, you know, I don't want to make it through. I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night and eat. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, sure. we're shake by the bed. Yeah, that's the you know, classic. And, yeah. you know, and I recommend casein protein before bed so that you have, you know, a trickling effect of amino acids mm-hmm. through the night. So you're essentially not fasting. So we've been talking about how to stay in a fed state almost, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, for anabolic reasons. And so that's really why I avoided doing it personally. I knew the benefits for fat loss and what the benefits are. In the lab is what we've shown is that most people think when you starve, your metabolism slows down. And it does. Mm-hmm. But that's with long term, right. you know, where you're not like refeeding and, you know, or you're dropping carbs mm-hmm. long term. Calories are carbs for a long period. So if you're starving yourself for long, yes, your metabolism is going to stall. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you're fasting and feeding, what happens is during the fasting period, you're your body produces more of these uncoupling proteins. And what uncoupling proteins are is they basically poke holes in the mitochondria. Mm -hmm. The mitochondria are our energy factories and muscle cells. That's where fat and carbs get turned into ATP. Mm -hmm. That's what makes energy. So these uncoupling proteins literally poke holes in the mitochondria and change the concentration gradient. So you produce less energy, more heat. It's like a car engine, right? Right. It Mm -hmm. produces heat and work, right? The more work it puts out and the less heat, the more efficient it is, Mm -hmm. right? This is during the fasting period. And so during the fasting period, what happens is you put out more heat, less energy, meaning you got to burn more fat and carbs now just to sit here. Yeah, you become inefficient. Starting at, like, what are we talking about, like eight hours? It's, I mean, you know, it's it's hard to see. It's more like a chronic, you know, sort Mm -hmm. of chronic. Okay, so over time, your body just gets accustomed to it. But what we do find acutely is that the meal that you follow the fast with is important. Mm -hmm. When the meal was followed, when the fast, sorry, when the fast was followed with a high protein meal, Mm -hmm. the production of those uncoupling proteins had another 
bump after the <laughs> fasting. When it was a high carb meal, the uncoupling proteins were blunted, but they were still maintained higher than someone who's not mm-hmm. intermittent fasting. Mm. Just and why so, you eat all these bears? Is and the, so, well, so what, yeah. <laughs> so, but what, the way I do it bears. is, is that you know I typically eat it for a sure. clock, and then I train in my feeding window. I train, oh, okay. you know, that way I, you know, I have more energy. Mm-hmm. I can recover mm-hmm. better, so better performance, better recovery during your your feeding window. So at four o'clock, my first meal is pro gym. I have a protein shake. That's it, and then I train. Mm-hmm. So I train with just protein and pre gym. I don't have carbs till. After the workout's over, okay. which is, you know, a good hour right. or so. And so on the days where I might train, like, let's say I train at 10 p.m. and I break my fast at 4, I'll still have just a protein shake or it'll be eggs or, mm-hmm. a sta- you know, it'll mm-hmm. in salad or fat. There'll be no carbs. Mm-hmm. And it's no calories the rest of the time or is it just drastically reduced calories? Prior to 4 mm-hmm. o'clock, no calories. No calories at all. No, okay. Okay. none whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So that's black coffee. You can drink fluid, water. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I typically go with black coffee or unsweetened tea. Mm-hmm. Once in a while, I might have like a Coke Zero, mm-hmm. a Diet Do, but I don't like to do the artificial sweetener because one of my concerns is is that fasting is really a state of the brain, mm-hmm. not just mm-hmm. a state of mm-hmm. the body. And so you're literally tricking your body that you're fasting, mm-hmm. right? Well, there's ways to trick your body that you're fed. Leucine, mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. example. The molecule leucine, the receptor that attaches to, have you ever heard of mTOR? Mm-hmm. You guys sure. heard of mTOR mm-hmm. leucine, right? And how, yeah. it, how that, that whole pathway, mm-hmm. that's also involved in the brain, but it's involved to tell the brain that the body is in a fed state because leucine is the most anabolic amino acid. So mm-hmm. if you have plenty of leucine in your blood, mm-hmm. you might as well be fed, basically. That, so all these yeah. people who who do branched amino acids, right. which is a lot of fasting, people. They say they're intermittent They're fasting truly not, oh, okay. you know, truly not fasting because they're telling their brain you're in a fed state. Mm-hmm. Now, they're fasting in the fact that they're not really consuming many calories, right. so they're still getting benefits, but you'll get better benefits if you avoid the leucine. And so one of my theories with the sweeteners, the artificial sweeteners is, you know, there's some data that shows when the tongue tastes yes. that sweetener, you know, those receptors... Tell the brain, hey, sugar, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It tricks the brain. That's what artificial sweeteners do. Mm -hmm. And and in some cases, it's been shown to enhance insulin release, more so in animals than, but I'm still concerned that that sweet taste Mm -hmm. is telling the brain, hey, we're we're getting sugar, even though you're not. So the last thing you want to do is trick your brain into thinking it's in a fed state accidentally. You know, by sipping mm-hmm. like a sweet uh, diet, even though it's no calories, mm-hmm. that sweetness might mm. might signal the brain, hey, we've got plenty of sugar. Right. Yeah. Meaning we don't have to use ketone bodies any longer. We can switch over, start, you know, increasing glycolysis. You know, let's change up the fuel sources that we're using. Mm-hmm. So speaking of the mental part of it and the, and the brain, you hear people talk a lot about how it feels mentally when they're fasting. They feel like it's almost an enhanced state of clarity. Yeah, you know, and what's interesting, right, is that at the beginning you go like, oh, I can't think. Right. So lethargic. Then about two weeks after you're like, oh, my God. Sometimes four o'clock rolls around, I have to force myself to eat. Yeah, you forget. You start to Well, not even that I forget. I don't, I don't want to eat because when I eat, I feel... Mm-hmm. You, you know, like, blood sugar. Yeah. I feel lethargic, mm-hmm. you know. So there's a lot of times a 4 o'clock rolls around where I, I have to force myself mm-hmm. to literally eat. And that's why sometimes I like just the, the protein shake mm-hmm. because it's, you know, it gives me yeah. something I feel, but it's not like, I feel, but it's weird how you sort of get used to it. And, yeah. you know, because I travel and I speak a lot, you know, it might be like I'll have to give like an 8 a.m., you know, opening talk somewhere right and i used to think oh i'll have breakfast just so i you know i'm mm-hmm. i have carbs and i'm right. you know i'm sharper on right. when i'm on stage I had you a know? piece of fruit right before this podcast and, yeah. and then i'm like <laughs> i feel like crap mm-hmm. why did i do that you know what i mean i feel better now once you're you're, you're used to it mm-hmm. you know if you, you actually feel better and you know it's it's kind of funny i was 
I can't remember who it was, but somebody was telling me, they're like, oh, can I, you know, I had my guy, I was like post-workout. They weren't even like, it was like a cameraman or something. Mm-hmm. They're like, uh, can I just have some gummy bears? My, my blood sugar, I, I'm, I'm getting really shaky. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you know, alcoholics get shaky too when they don't have alcohol. <laughs> and you know how they fix the shakiness? They drink more alcohol. Right. The problem isn't that you need carbs. The problem is you're eating too many carbs and that you can't go long enough without them. Like, your body should be able to go a long time without feeling shaky. Mm-hmm. And if it, if it can't do that, it's due to your diet. Mm-hmm. Cut down on the carbs. You're so reliant mm-hmm. on carbs that you can't even go two hours. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. Without a meal? That's not normal. But we're just you know? ritualizing <laughs> our behaviors, too. Right. Exactly. Right? That's part of you just well, can't even just imagine like, oh my morning God, without I, French toast. It's been two right. hours. I need some gummy bears. I feel like crap. Right. Like, no, that's the last thing you need. And we were talking about that earlier where intermittent fasting, of all the things I've ever tried, and, and I'm sure you can ex- you experience this with your clients, it's one thing that can actually eliminate that dependency, that yes. addiction, whatever you want to and, call it. And you know, it. the research shows it actually enhances insulin sensitivity. I mean, the, the research on intermittent fasting is the health. I'm talking about the health benefits. Insulin sensitivity, better immune function. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It fights jet lag. Do you know it fights mm-hmm. jet lag? I did not know that. I wish I'd known that two years ago. Well, do you know why? So usually you have, you know, we have our 24-hour clock, right? Mm-hmm. So... Here in Boise, right, you're on, what is this, uh, mountain mountain, mm-hmm. mountain mm-hmm. time, right? So if you travel, let's say, well, let's say you're in L.A., it's Pacific mm-hmm. time, and you travel to New York, which is Eastern time. So it's now east. now, when the clock is claiming it's 6 o'clock mm-hmm. and it's starting at dark, your body's like, hang on, not, why is it getting dark now? Mm-hmm. We've got three... More out, and then the next day it does, and eventually your body finally goes, "Oh, okay, I'm three hours faster," and catches up. Takes about a week or so, right? Mm-hmm. Well, another cue we use is feeding cues because we're, you know, animals of habit. So, mm-hmm. right, if you typically eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you know, reasonably same time, those are cues right. that you use throughout your day. When you fast, you erase that food. It's almost like erasing the light cue, if you could, if you could do that, mm-hmm. you know, which we really can't. But it erases the food cue if you fast for at least 16 hours. Then if you have your first meal at the normal time, like I, L.A., 4 p.m., mm-hmm. when I'm in New York, I fast for at least 16 hours and I don't eat till 4 p.m. New York time. I eat that protein shake, my body goes, 4 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's 4 o'clock. Okay. So it's an extra little cue that fast forwards your body's adjustment to the new time zone. It gives you control too. And trust yeah. me, I you know when I travel, it's not like you know I have to travel and then hi, I'm, you know let's work out at eight, you know <laughs> eight a.m. Yeah, you know I mean I'm <laughs> I've been on a plane for twenty hours, but <laughs> so I don't know where I am or what time zone I'm in, but yeah. I feel great. But you I'm know? ready to Seriously, go. Seriously, it makes. Yeah. A huge, huge. It's so a it huge sounds thing. like you are a seven days a week faster. Right? Oh, I fa- oh, Do you yeah. think that that is the the best approach for somebody to follow? Because there are five two. There's every yeah, other I, day. I, did the I five really and two. like so. Yeah. So I do the sixteen eight, which mm-hmm. is basically I fast for sixteen hours every day mm-hmm. till four p.m. and then I eat for eight hours mm-hmm. continually. <laughs> yeah. Well, no. You know. Do I mean? Yeah. I mean, you eat enough in that eight hours, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I really don't eat that. I probably. Only like 3,000 calories. Uh-huh. It really does blunt your cravings. Yeah. Like you do not overeat. Yeah, your stomach it's, really it's shrinks. Right. Yeah. yeah. You, you, you definitely don't – you'll find that you need far less food. Mm-hmm. Um, but the five to two is where you do two days out of the week. And you and don't want to do did. those consecutive days. Yeah, you you want to do two full days. Mm-hmm. And and there's a couple you could do like where you you only do 600 calories. I right. prefer a full. Like mm-hmm. again, you really want to to get the true health benefits like the immune boost mm-hmm. and the um, help with the jet lag and the insulin sensitivity. You want to do a full fast. Mm-hmm. You don't want to, you know, what oh, 600 calories. You, you need the fast. You know yeah. what I mean? Fast. It's two days. Mm-hmm. You know, 24 hours. And then the other five days, you're pretty much loose to you know. What mm-hmm. you can eat, you right. you you have no time restrictions. Obviously, you don't want to be eating pizzas all day, but mm-hmm. you know you can be a little looser on those days because of those two days. Mm-hmm. 
that you sort of gave it your all, where you literally ate nothing, mm -hmm. you know? And so your reward is now on these other five days of the week, I can eat anytime I want and within reason, pretty much what I want. Mm -hmm. So have you done a full day or multiple I've day done fast? That. I've done that too. I, I don't like that mm -hmm. uh, so much um, because I like the regular 16, eight, uh, fasting, and uh, I just think it's better to, to have that repetition versus, you know, two days and then full eating whatever you want. Sure. Hmm. And one of the first guests that I had on, on the podcast was this great researcher named Dom Diagostino, who's done a bunch of work oh, of about yeah. about yeah. fasting. And uh, and I remember asking him, like, because you fast, do you think that makes you drink more coffee? And he kind of thought about it and he said, Oh, whatever. Definitely. You know, he drinks a ton of coffee. <laughs> you know, he, he laid it out very calmly, but yeah, it sounded like this guy drinks like six pots of coffee a day. <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, right. But do, do you find that it, your your caffeine intake increased yeah, a pace? Yeah, no, because I'm a, I'm a big, you mm -hmm. know. You're a caffeine I'm guy. I'm a anyway. caffeine yeah. guy. <laughs> opponent. Um, I wouldn't say it increased. Um, or then is it is it central to, or essential to the project of fasting? I don't think so. I mean, a lot of times I just drink wa cold water, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I, I mean, I like coffee, so I prefer coffee. It helps if you like coffee and tea. And I, it does. Yeah. I do want to hammer home the point. You didn't see any change in your muscle mass from, from so, going on to a, an intermittent Yeah, fasting. so, you know, so like I said, the reason I never wanted to do intermittent fasting was because of the, mm -hmm. I was worried about the muscle mass loss. But now what's interesting is there's new research showing that if you take a lean individual, mm -hmm. and this is just using B, BI, you know, BIA. Uh, well, sorry, BMI. Not, <laughs> I was trying to figure out what BIA stood for. <laughs> that's, 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 yeah. that's how we measure water. And, I'm sorry, but we're doing a study. We're sorry. doing a study on, you know, when I manipulate I'm my water levels. Gym, yeah, sorry. so, sorry. <laughs> it's, a, it's a testing method. But BMI, okay. thank you, body mass index. <laughs> they looked at lean, overweight, and obese mm -hmm. and fed them a high-protein meal. The lean guy's protein synthesis was through the roof compared to both the overweight and the obese, hmm. meaning the leaner you are, the more anabolic you might be. Mm -hmm. So the old strategy of bulking up mm -hmm. and getting fat might actually be working against your muscle mass gains. Staying lean might keep you more anabolic. And to test that theory, what I've been doing is literally using the intermittent fasting to get my body fat down to as low as I can and then see how my muscle mass responds. Mm -hmm. And so far, I've, I've actually been gaining mm. small amounts because I'm 49 and natural and right. pretty much at the peak. I, it's not like I'm going to gain an inch on my arms, but mm. I could gain it. If I gain a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch, I mean, that's a big deal for me, right. especially mm -hmm. at, you know, this that's pure muscle. Sure, that's, especially because you got your beginner gains at age seven. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, so, I mean, I am literally gaining now that, you know, now that my, my, I'm sort of, I'm sort of done trying to drop body fat to some degree. Uh, and so now what I'm doing is just maintaining around like 4%. And mm -hmm. so what it does is it allows me to play with my protein mm -hmm. and the amount of calories while still staying lean, and I'm and I'm finding I have no trouble whatsoever with muscle mass. But muscle mass is not my goal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's really not my true goal anymore at, at at this age. You know, I'm always trying to obviously get my arms as you know big. More now, it's more about you know uh, you know building more. It's more bodybuilding. You know, right. adding more middle dull, adding more. You know, those sorts of yeah, changes. Really, really sculpting those. Yeah, yeah, like though, which is still gaining muscle, mm -hmm. but it's not like you know, gaining huge amounts mm -hmm. of, of muscle. So then it has to kind of go in hand, hand in hand with that consistent training then as well, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah, and so, you know, what I do find is that with the intermittent fasting, with the daily training, that you're getting the best of both worlds, fat yeah, loss, you've got it muscle in fifth gains, year and you can just kind health, of cruise along. You know. Hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and if somebody's curious about intermittent fasting, what what should they ha keep in mind when they're starting this in terms of how to time their workouts? Should they try to get lean first, or should they do this to get lean? Yeah, I well, you know, that's you know, with, like I said, with that research I was talking about showing that you're more anabolic, leaner. Right. You know, I used to say, well, the goal is up to you. Now I now I kind of tell people, well, you might as well get leaner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like all of us probably 
can use to get leaner. Most of us, at least, can mm -hmm. use. Yeah, you're at four percent, Jim. I don't know you if know, you can I don't go much right. further. But for most people, <laughs> you probably could be leaner. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Most people's goal, you know, most people probably aren't six percent body fat, right? Mm -hmm. So most people can always be a little leaner. So now my recommendation is more, you know, what's the point of having muscle if you can't really see it? Mm -hmm. Nah. You know what I mean? Unless you're an athlete, <laughs> right. right? If you're a power lifter, a strong man, an athlete, sure. that's fine. But if you really want, a, if you're, a, you're just lifting to look better, why would you want to cover muscle with mm -hmm. body fat? Mm -hmm. Right. And having gone to a couple of powerlifting meets here locally to watch my friend or look, watch them streaming online, a lot more powerlifters are showing up looking crazy ripped these days Leaner, too yeah, exactly. that, that, that guy really? used to be a, to yeah. a little bit more of a rarity right but now there are a lot more of those sort of guys far there. more and yes like uh chinese olympic weightlifters Leaner, are crazy yeah, lean a lot leaner, of them but i feel yeah. like the dirty bulk has gone out of out of vogue a little bit people are not they're actually trying to bulk kind of what you're talking about without gaining a whole lot of extra yeah, body fat because really what's the point, what's the you're, point? Know, you're gonna stress all your systems trying exactly to do that. and it's never good to be yo-yo dieting no. anyway. you know what happens you know you you store a lot of toxins in your fat. Right. Mm -hmm. And so every time you diet and lose body fat, you release those toxins into mm -hmm. your bloodstream. And that's why you feel like crap when you diet. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. Mm -hmm. When you're losing fat, you're releasing those toxins, like styrene from styrofoam, mm -hmm. which gets stored in fat cells. There's a lot of toxins that get stored in the mm -hmm. fat cells. If you just stay lean, you know, <laughs> you just get lean and stay lean. You just lean. feel great all you know the time. I mean? We like, should all versus, be lean. you know, <laughs> gaining, losing, gain. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing you can do, uh, you know, is the yo-yo diet. Right. Even if it's like bodybuilding style. That's not, mm -hmm. it's not healthy. And even, you know, I'm trying to work now with a lot of athletes who have to lose weight. on convincing them to live at their fighting weight. Yeah. Like, then you know what happens? Then you actually get stronger. Because mm -hmm. once your body adapts to that weight, it's no longer a stress to maintain it. The only reason you get weaker when you lose weight is because it's a massive stress on the body to mm -hmm. lose all that body weight. Once the body has adapted to that body weight and it's easy to maintain, that's your normal homeostasis now. So you'll be, you know, so you're working against yourself by living at 220 and then dropping down to, you know, right, yeah. 198 for your fight. Right. And then it, you wonder why your body goes right back up to 220. Yeah, and then you wonder why you're so weak during the fight. Sure. You know what I mean? Whereas if you lived at one, you know, 98, you'd, mm -hmm. your body would be adapted and you'd walk in there like – at your strongest form, you know what I mean, <laughs> versus... <laughs> so so do you find that the people sense. who are approaching intermittent fasting from a, a fat loss perspective because they want to change their body composition, maybe they are overweight, do you find that's a less stressful approach for them, ultimately, in terms of the stress on their body? Or you mean it... using the intermittent fasting? Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I think, like, you know, because it's, like you said, it's so easy to do. It's mm -hmm. yes or no, right? So it's not, you know, it's far easier to follow because the rules are... A lot simpler. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you know, well, I can have my carbs now or I can, you know, and wait, is it time to wait? I'm not supposed right, to. And how many? Yeah, you know, this is like, yes or no? Mm -hmm. Can I eat? No. <laughs> what time? It's, you know, is that it sounds simple? scary so I, to somebody initially? It but, does. Yeah, but less choice know, can be a good thing sometimes, too. It right? does, yeah, mm -hmm. because, you know, like I said, when you're like waiting in a Starbucks mm -hmm. line, you don't do that sort of mental math. With your diet. How many it's like, cake yeah, pops? Yeah, if I just had one <laughs> cake pop, let's see, that's how many calories, how many carbs. If I don't have rice with my dinner and then, like, you don't have to do mm -hmm. any of that. Just like, no, mm -hmm. I can't, you know. Mm -hmm. On or off. Yeah, it literally. And mm -hmm. so, but, if so, that, but, but again, it's the type of person you are. Right, you know what right. I mean? If you need to have food free will anytime, if you need that. Right. Then yeah, you put it before strategy. we started recording. You put it really well. It's what you right. eat versus when you eat. Right. Yeah. So Which right. sort of person are fasting, you? It's you can't eat when you want. Mm -hmm. You can't, but you can pretty much eat what you want. Mm -hmm. Or you can eat when you want, but you can't eat what you want. Mm -hmm. So like those are the two main diet strategies. Mm -hmm. But now I did hear you definitely say earlier that the first meal matters. The first meal does matter. I mean, for someone who's more in, you know, if you really. Look, it, as long as you do the 16 and 8, as long as you stick to those rules, I, 
again, I wouldn't worry for the average person. However, if you really truly want to maximize mm-hmm. your results, then I would suggest sticking with a high protein, low carb meal as your first mm-hmm. meal. And then maybe mm-hmm. an hour or so after, okay. start including carbs. And in terms of scheduling training, do you think it is best to train it's in a fed state? Best to train in a fed state. It's always best to train in, especially if you're interested in muscle mass and performance. Mm-hmm. If your goal, you know, if you're just an average person who just wants to maximize fat loss, it doesn't matter when you train. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. If you want to maximize your performance and the results you get, mm-hmm. train when you're fed. So you can do your fasted cardio, but expect it to suck, basically. Is yeah, well, you know, <laughs> do you want to really talk about fasted cardio? Right. You mm-hmm. know, what the research shows on fasted cardio is pretty debatable mm-hmm. because, you know, what we used to think is that, oh, you burn more fat during the exercise fasted. It's true. Mm-hmm. You do. But what happens the rest of the day? That's what nobody looked at. Right. Mm-hmm. So we were all telling people fasted cardio is the best way because you burn more fat, right? Mm-hmm. That makes sense. However, it doesn't lead to better fat loss in the mm-hmm. long run. So why is that? Well, we started looking at what's going on the rest of the day. The more fat you burn during your workout, the less fat you burn the rest of the day. The less fat you burn during your workout, the more fat you burn the rest of the day. (laughs) Do you work out more or do you have the rest of the day more? Right. Right? How much time is your workout and how much time is the rest of the day? Mm -hmm. So you want to be maximizing fat burning during the rest of the day, not during the workout. What does that? High-intensity interval training. Mm -hmm. What does high-intensity interval training burn? Carbs. All carbs during the workout, but... The rest of the day, you're burning fat like a madman. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. So fasted cardio, you know, what we used to think is it's a snapshot. You know, we had a snapshot of what's going on acutely, and then we make projections. Oh, well, that means you're going to lose more fat because you burnt more during the workout. Yes, if you also burn more the rest of the day. But guess what? You don't burn more the rest of the day because you burned more during the workout. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay, so so then if somebody so is trying to cardio, schedule their cardio, I don't recommend fasted cardio recommend. for the average. You know, if you're like me at like four percent, and you're like, you know what, I just have this one spot that I'm trying to get. Fasted cardio might work for you, that, but because that's, that's, that's when somebody you're who's already really trying to fasting. get rid of every little bit of fat. Right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's when you're, if you're at twelve percent body fat, it's not going to make a difference if you. Do your cardio fasted, or if you did your cardio after McDonald's, mm-hmm. literally, well, it but, doesn't. But, but we're talking about we're <laughs> talking know? about somebody who's fasted versus somebody who's doing intermittent fasting as well. Though, like that's it seems like once you are actually too, you you've adapted to that yes. intermittent fasting protocol. Maybe you, you have a little bit more laxity there. Like, oh, you know, I could I, certainly train fasted if I wanted to. And I, you know, I work out. I mean, I stay active all day. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all day, and you know, that's one of my other messages. Is you know, what is a workout? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We've become so sedentary that things that we normally do all day, walking, lifting, moving, picking things up, we have to condense into an hour because we sit out. on our butts mm-hmm. all day. Right. Right? That's not how we don't exercise. We're not made to sit around and then go, I'm going to run like hell for now. The battle. Yeah. Now I'm going to sit down <laughs> the rest of the day. Mm-hmm. And even the research on television watching shows that even if you lift an hour or you work out an hour a day, if you sit for, I don't quote me on the actual hours, mm-hmm. more than three hours a week in front of the television, the benefits of the workout are pretty much gone. I remember when that came out, it was kind of a mind blower, but it made perfect sense. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. You can't sit. You can't be sitting all day. We're not made mm-hmm. to be sedentary. So I'm active all day, even when I'm fasted. Mm-hmm. I might go for a hike in the middle of the day. Fasted. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go to the gym and train a full I, – I might if that's the only time I can. Mm-hmm. You know, if I know this is my only block of – where I'll train fasted if I have to. It's not ideal. Mm-hmm. But, again, it's not – you know, when you're fasted and you're used to intermittent fasting and you exercise, it's not like, oh, my God, it's so – you know, it's, right. it's, it's normal. You know what I mean? It's – sure. But yeah, no, I remember uh, Dom D'Agostino, he, he set the record for the most weight lifted in an hour, and he was seven days fasted at the time when he did it. <laughs> wow. All he did was squats for an hour straight. It was, it's a, there's a video of it online. It's terrifying. 
wow. but he's but he's a freak too. Oh, I know. Oh, my yeah. yeah, he's but um uh, and so the, so then are you also that guy who parks in the furthest parking spot away from the Yeah, the, so you I know, I'm that guy I'm currently my stairs. Stairs. I, 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 yeah, yeah, you know, I do right videos. Uh, yeah. You know, I'll do videos on, you know, my social media. Parking like mm -hmm. the last spot, you know. Mm -hmm. Taking the stairs. Don't use the, you know, escalator or elevator. Just that incidental know. stuff. It does yep. you, you find it does really add up over time. Yo, without yeah. without a mm -hmm. doubt because mm -hmm. those that's that's the type of activity that's most important. That mm -hmm. staying active all day, you know, it's just finding the ways to stay active. In addition to your, sure, you're still going to do your workout, right? Mm -hmm. But in addition to the workout, you still need to stay active. Mm -hmm. I mean, because that, that is one hit that, that or uh, one one knock that people have against full body training is they say, "I'm so if I have to do a full body workout, I'm going to be so crushed, I can't do I'm anything not else. Do anything. Yeah. So I'm only going to change. I'm only going to yeah. do triceps and chest today because that way I can still play with my kids later or yeah. something well, like I that. I just did a whole body workout before the. Uh -huh. Podcast. Mm -hmm. So, do I look? Uh, you 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 do not look drained. <laughs> <laughs> you do not seem drained at all. No. Yeah, um, and so you know the other the other thing that I preach about is what I call my thirty sixty rule, and it goes on with that data from mm -hmm. television watching, and what it shows is if you sit for more than thirty minutes, getting back to gene regulation, genes are involved in burning fat, turn off genes that. Enhance fat storage, get turned on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Genes that help prevent metabolic disorders get altered if you're sitting for too long. So my 30-60 rule is for every 30 minutes mm -hmm. that you're sitting, you do 60 seconds of anything. It could okay. be stretching. It could be walking. It could I was be... scared you were going to say 60 minutes. <laughs> no. <laughs> 60 seconds. No, I, there is, yeah, that's, that's a great rule. That's a There's great something really rule. important in what you're saying there, too, because people mm -hmm. talk about genetics casually as if yeah. it's a death sentence always. Like, right. blame it on genetics. I'm just, I'm cursed, I'm or you're, you're blessed because yeah. of genetics. Right. But you're saying you actually have a lot of control yeah, over you know, yourself. Yeah, a surprising genetics. amount of control you know, over. You know, yes. you know epigenetics mm -hmm. are critical. And, you know, what epigenetics basically are is, you know, things that we do, the food uh, choices that we make, uh, you know, environmental factors all affect our genes that we then pass on. It's not just genes that have been passed along, passed along. Those genes get changed along the way based on our environment, things we eat, things that, you know, we get exposed to. Mm -hmm. That changes the genes that we then pass on to our, our children. Mm -hmm. So... You know, staying active, eating a good diet can actually enhance the health of your offspring. Interesting. It's a, a good message to end on. Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Jim Stepani, for coming oh, and talking to us. Thank you so much. Pleasure.